So welcome to another board game review from playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at The King is Dead. Long live the king. From Osprey Games. Uh, this is a three player. Well, it's actually two to four. Sure. It but... is, but this is a three player area control action economy game. Mm -hmm. That covers medieval Britain. So... You have the British Isles, and they're divided mm -hmm. up into eight spaces, and you have eight action cards, and mm -hmm. you will play <laughs> through Eight different those. rounds, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. And uh, those will get resolved for control based <clears throat> on colored cubes that are on the board, and then at some point, uh, the a victory will be determined through two different victory conditions, which I have in here. I meant to get that out. <laughs> There we go. So, there's two ways the game can end. And that's very important to know. Well, actually, there's a third table flip. Because they're <laughs> upset. But two ways the game can end in a conclusion. Legally, <laughs> Legally in a conclusion. <laughs> so, that's, that's, so, immediately, this game has, like, a lot to consider just from that. So, the yeah. game can end by having resolved all eight of the regions for control. Then... Whichever faction, so there's yellow for English, red for Welsh, and blue for Scottish, whichever one of those three colours has the most discs on the board, the player who has a court that has the most cubes matching that winning colour wins the game. Mm -hmm. Great. So the person who is most aligned with the winning faction gets coronated. Great. That's, that, that's fairly standard, normal victory condition from an area control game. That makes sense. And, and I think that's a majority of the way the game is not going to end. I'm not sure it's <laughs> going to end that... And I said that very weirdly, I realize. <laughs> I don't... I'm not sure it's going to be decided in that way more than it is the other way. That you've yet to and it's, describe. Yes. So the, because <laughs> that other way is... It's a little easier to control and force. It, it can be. I think it can be easy to and manipulate end it that way. Early, which is fine, but I just think you need to be aware of that. So, the, frankly, the other way that it can end is when an area is resolved for control. If um, there's no clear winner, e.g., no faction has more than the others, yeah. or if there's no cubes on it at all, which is possible, then you put out a little black disc, which is kind of a, an unstable and instability disc. Mm -hmm. If three of those come out, then the French invade because the country is unstable, yep. and then victory is adjudicated very differently. Your victory then ceases to be about who's got the most of the winning colour. Mm -hmm. Your victory conditions, you look at your court, and you're looking for sets of cubes. So if you've got one yellow, one, one red, one color, blue, yeah. that is considered a set. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> playing for either one of those two victory conditions hurts you in the other victory condition. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. And so you cannot really be in on both of them at the same time. No. But often it's what impossible. you'll have is you'll have people just trying to get sets and at the end maybe branch out into somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe. But you have to constantly survey this board mm -hmm. that is always changing. Yeah. And with every card play. Yeah, the the flux in it is so interesting. Mm -hmm. But based on what everyone's trying to do, because your turn consists of I either pass, or I play one of my eight action cards only that you never get back, and then... And that are the same action cards as yes. other players have. The base game, it's all symmetric. You're just going to play them in different order. So you play a card, resolve that action, and that action is often moving cubes around, or adding, adding cubes, cubes to the board, and then you have to remove a cube from the board. At the end of every card play, some you've got to take some cube off the board... And put it in your court. And so you start the game with two random ones. Mm -hmm. So you might start with two yellow, a red and a blue, two blue, whatever combination. And then you're going to play a card, do an action. And then you're going to remove one cube. And so your court that starts with two, by the end of the game, if you play all eight cards, it's going to be ten strong. Yeah. And so, and so early on you find yourself, let's make a couple sets. Mm -hmm. So that we don't lose that way. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, but then it's like, oh... Am I incentivized to play for the invasion then? Because I've already yeah. got some sets, let's trigger that. Yeah. Or do you then branch out into maybe one of the factions that's got a couple discs on the board? Yep. Or do you, from very early in the game, go, I'm going real hard on the Welsh and get all the red ones? But if you do that, though, we, we've talked about this, yeah. we talked about it during the game. 
if you have the most of, of one color's cubes, you're going to have less of those color's cubes on the board yes. doing what they need to do, controlling territories. Yes. There's only a certain amount. I, I don't know how many cubes there were of each type, oh, yeah, it, but it's, it's not, not a not lot. A lot. And 18 of each. 18. So with eight spaces, to control a space, you're going to need at least two, probably three. There are times where you can win it with one, depending on what's yeah. happened. But that, that means there's not a lot of cube. When you take them off, man, they're, they're gone. And then when an area gets adjudicated or decided, all the cubes in that area get moved into the pool. And so if, if everyone's hammered on one area... You get a disc there, and all those cubes yeah. go away. You can't take them anymore. Yep. It's 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 so like, the colors oh. the colors that they represented. You can really no longer. Yeah, that, I mean that, you can go for them. That but place is decided. It's there, gone. Just decided. Yeah. All those peoples have, have settled basically. So so it really becomes it really boils down to I think three things: one, knowing the victory conditions and monitoring those victory conditions oh, yeah. very closely from card play to card play. Secondly like you said, is you've got to have one foot in almost each camp until the moment is right. Right? And yeah, and figuring out that moment is, is the hard thing. Is the challenge. Because the you don't know what everyone else has in their cards. You can see what their pool of courtiers are, so that kind of helps you. But the third thing that I say is very important is understanding when to play a card, when to pass, and allow others to play either their card... Or yes. play another card so they play two cards in one round. Yeah. Which is ultimately going to eliminate them from contention in the last round because they're not going to be able to play anything. It's very easy to expend yourself in this game. It is. Because the reality is, is you. I don't know whether you should, but you're going to play one card in the resolution of each round, of each... That, that's what I did. That's probably what you. That's probably yep. what you should do. I, I forced myself to have that reserve because I wanted to see how that was going to play out. You guys kind of spent your. You shot your shells. Yeah, we were trying to go real hard to trigger the invasion, which we were close to doing. Very close. But neither of us wanted to do it because you have to do it and then pass, and yeah. then that person is going to then pass after having taken an action, and then. Whoever's played, and we were tied with yeah, sets, right? And so, if it's a tie when the invasion happens, whoever played the last action card, yep. card yep. wins. And Which so, is an so interesting way. We to were just blown it. through our cards because yep. no one wanted to pl to be you. You wanted to play the last card, yeah. so you would play a card. Yep. And you were just waiting for the other person to check it out mm -hmm. and to pass, yep. and then they would win. And then, so yeah, we really fascinating. It, it's. <laughs> Frankly, the, the dynamic here between the three players and the, the mechanics and their combination just work really deliciously well it's, together. It's so tight. The yeah. action economy is so tight. The cube economy is so tight. Because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, this board looks great. And then all of a sudden you take one cube off and you're like, oh, that made a big difference. Yeah. Because now this area is not going to get adjudicated this way. Yep. And other people are going to move stuff in there or they're going to do these other things. Yep. It's like... Oh, that's going to hurt this area mm -hmm. and have all these knock-on effects. Well, so and, neat. And the other cool thing about the cards is you're going to draw these out, these eight regions. I think it's random, right? Th those are random, yeah. So you're, you're putting them down. It may be Wessex. It may be uh, Gwynedd, Northumbria, Warwick. And there's one card that's called Negotiate. And ultimately that card I think is your most powerful card to be used at the appropriate time yes. that either benefits you and your strategy or... Or stop someone else from winning with theirs. But that allows literally for you to take an area out and switch it and be adjudicated in a different order than the game was set up as. And I love that because it it gave you a lot of power when you had that card still. And you don't know what everybody else has really played. Yeah, with with only eight cards and two other players, you can card count. And you can, you're, but you're kind of encouraged to, I think, in this game. Man, I can't do that. Yeah, I'm it's not. I'm not, not good, good at, at it, it. But but it's something that you're really trying yeah. to pay attention to. Yep. Because you can't get any other cards back. No, you Everything's can't. Everything's a one ever. shot. And you can't look through all these discards. You can only see the top one, the yeah. most recent one that they played. Yeah. But it's it's a very intense game, a very vicious game. Well, and, and, and we talked about that a lot when we were playing it, because I, I think I put out a tweet, 
and said, oh, we love this game. What an interesting experience. And someone got on there and said, really? I, I found it terribly dull. Oh. And I'm like, well, it, I said, frankly, it was probably because of the people you played with. Because we were cutthroat. We were at it. We were it, it's into it. It's impossible not to be. Well, it's, it's what the game is about. Every action you do with so few areas... Hurt someone else or affect someone, someone else. Absolutely screw someone over. Yeah. And and that's just putting stuff out. Then you take one off. Yeah. And you like double hose people. Yep. Oh. And, and, and to me, that's what this game is about. If you're going to come into this and hope, oh, I'm going to get through this without hurting people's feelings or backstabbing someone or doing something that that they're going to be unhappy with it. Don't play this game. Yeah. Go, go play, go play connect four or something else. Cause that, that's not what this game is. It it's, is cutthroat. It's cutthroat and it's backstabby in a way, Yeah. but no one's getting their feelings hurt. Cause it takes 30 or 40 minutes yeah, to it's, play. It's a fast so game. No one's, yep. no one's getting uptight about it. And it's so interesting. I, I feel like it kept my attention. And I remember when you got it out and I looked, I was like, Oh, this isn't going to be that great, man. This kept my attention and kept me engaged and trying to understand what I was trying to do. Uh, just fascinating. A really interesting game, frankly. Yeah, with a lot of games of this style have like all these convoluted combat mechanics and no all combat. this stuff. Yep. Nothing like that. This, nope. is, this is a very abstract game. It's just putting cubes out, yep. taking cubes off, moving cubes around, which I normally hate that. Yeah. That's like normally not my well, style. Well, that feels very Euro game-like, right? And there's yeah, nothing and wrong like, with cool, Euro games, but... Like, but Doing it for area control, which is something that I like. I'm like, cool. And also, it's 40 minutes. So it's just a yeah. very abstract game, but it it's very quick. much does not overstay its welcome. And yeah. it's, I just thought it was so really tightly and well done Yeah, for what it is. Well, And, and we've also played, we've played at least one other game, maybe two of Pierre Sylvester's uh, Let Them Eat Cake, also, also by Osprey. Very fun uh, French Revolution card game where you're, you're, you're manipulating and trying to mess other people over. and I, Very fascinating game. This game, I think, feels similarly to that in that regard of, oh, I'm really trying to to, to hurt you yes. to help myself. And, and very it's just, adversarial game. Yeah, it's times. very adversarial. But it it's so interesting. I've never seen a game with this few components elicit the kind of feelings that I heard from us yeah. around the table. Glee, tension, um angst uh, concern joy i mean it was just it was the gamut and and we could see it in our faces and i really enjoyed this yes i would love to play this again N now that we've played it and, and are way more familiar with it i want to play it more and more yes to understand how it changes what i'll do is i'll show you how the board works and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts so here's a look at the map as you see it's, this is very small um, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight areas uh, within the British Isles that you'll be kind of playing with. Little kind of tip of France uh, with uh, Normandy in there is is depicted, but um, this is just a kind of a holding box to indicate where, the, just to hold these invasion tokens, so to speak. So in this game, you are leaders, but you are not faction aligned. If you think about something like um, uh, Pax Pamir 2nd Edition where you're, you are you are a person uh, but your alignment is indicated by your by your tableau. In this game your alignment is indicated by your um, by your court which are these little cubes that you are randomly drawn out of a bag. So for example uh, this player has two red cubes. They're more heavily aligned with the Welsh faction. This is yellow and red, so they've got one of English and one of Welsh. I've got yellow and blue, one of Scottish, one of English. And you're, th this court is going to grow, and you can choose which ones to take to change your alignment, so to speak. And that's important because there's two ways this game ends. Um, the game's going to progress through resolving the control of each one of these areas. Um, if it's resolved with an invasion and three, all three of these invasion tokens go out, then the game is going to end with an invasion. And then the person who has the most sets, so if you've kind of hedged your bets and you've got, you know, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red, blue, and that's what you've got, if you've got the most sets, of uh, complete sets, you're going to win the game. 
uh, and the tiebreaker is whoever played an action card last, which is very important. However, if these don't come out, or not all of them come out, and you're able to resolve e all eight of these, um, kind of normally, then you go to a coronation. And then it's a bit more traditional where you've got... Uh, e each one of these will be controlled by one of these factions and have discs on them. Whichever faction has the most, let's say it was yellow, if yellow controlled the most regions, whoever had the most yellow cubes in their court would win the game. Tiebreakers going to um, the, kind of the next faction in the line, who, who controls the next most. And if you get into multiple, multiple ties, eventually it goes down to whoever played the last action card. Also very important, and we'll get back to that. So your, your alignment is in flux, and you're doing all of this area control and politicking and growing your court to try and make sure that you're making the correct bet at the last moment to win. Uh, and doing all of this in about 40 minutes, and it's really tight because this is your hand of action cards. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You will at most play eight actions in this game. Um, you will do a lot of passing, probably. You will do a lot of uh, trying to kind of stay in things. So how the game works is, is I'm going to play a card and take an action. So let's say I do Welsh support. I take two cubes from the supply that are red, and I can put them uh, uh, into or, or adjacent uh, to Wales. If there's a Welsh kind of controlled area, fully controlled area, it's got to go in or adjacent to that. But if there isn't one, it's in or adjacent to Wales. So I can put these out, don't have to be in the same one. I could put them either here or here, or I could put them in here as well. But what I'm looking at is the, the first, these are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first area to be resolved is going to be Essex. Well, my little Welsh guys aren't going to contribute to that, so maybe I wouldn't play that card. Maybe I'm trying to, because I can't place my red guys kind of over there quite yet. So maybe I'm trying to do something like Assemble, where I can place one of each color into any ones that I wish. That way I could put a red one into Essex. So now England doesn't have a majority there. Um, I could also put a blue one into Scotland, kind of as a throwaway. I'm already gonna, Scotland's already very Scottish, so we can keep them up there and not have them grow support down here. And I've got an English one. We can kind of do the same thing. We can foment an English rebellion uh, up in Scotland. So we, we're gonna kind of throw all the bad stuff up here. We're gonna sacrifice one of these that might be late game that might, might not come up. Having played my action, that's my singular action that I do with that, that card is forever gone. I then have to take and remove one cube from the board. So that cube is gonna join your court. And so you think, okay, well, I don't wanna take all these red ones if I'm trying to go red aligned, cause then this area will never win. Same thing here, same thing here. Don't wanna take one from here cause English will win that. I could do this, it's gonna weaken my position in Wales necessarily. And you think, well, we're already losing here, maybe we'll just take this one. That way I have a set, so I, I, you know, I'm kind of good from the front side and I have my options available to kind of skew into any one of, the, of these three factions. That's my turn. Then the next person's gonna go, they might play a card. Uh, to, to kind of alter this. They're gonna do some actions. Again, there's actions which is placing out yellow ones, much like we did uh, the red ones. Uh, doing an assemble, where it's one of each color into any three different areas. Uh, placing red ones. You can negotiate. This is a very strong one. You can say, we're gonna switch these two, and we're gonna put a marker on here so no one can move this one ever again. And that means that now, I'll put all this stuff into Essex, well, now we're going to resolve Moray first, and if you're the Mr. Scotland man, you're feeling pretty good about yourself if you're blue aligned. If you had a bunch of blue cubes, it's like, sweet, we're going to control that. We're going to kind of make some headway in this game. But every time, every time you play a card, you have to remove a cube from the board. So do you take one from here and think, ah, we're still kind of safe? Or do you just say, we're sacrificing this in Essex because the Scottish are never going to win, and now I've got, you know, some, some blue alignment in me as well. So that's negotiate, assemble, you get, there's a couple of assembles. Maneuver is literally take any one cube from any one area and we'll toss it down here and we'll take one cube from that area over here. 
So now we really screw over the Welsh player in Essex because now they definitely can't take Essex, or at least it's much more difficult. Uh, and we're kind of diluting their cube in Scotland where they're not going to do anything anyway. But then again, I also have to remove from, from the board. So do I put myself in a more tenuous position here or do I sacrifice Devon thinking, well, we're never going to get there anyway. And then do I follow that up with some kind of blue support where I can put some guys in Strathclyde, for example. And the last one is an outmaneuver where they have to be adjacent areas. You can take one and move two. And you can really swing things if something's coming up in Strathclyde. You're like, yeah, we're going to take Strathclyde. We're going to sacrifice Moray. Or I'm going to follow that up with something. So why this is important is because you're doing this, but you have extremely limited actions. You literally have only eight actions in the game. And every other time, you're going to be passing. And if everyone passes in a row, all three players, you then will resolve this. Uh, and so we resolve Moray. Great. This and this is equal, which means it's unstable. So we have uh, the instability. If there's lots of instability, the French, being opportunists, will come and invade. So this is unstable. We're going to flip this over. And then we just go again from whoever was the next player. So we're going to go again, everyone's going to play a card. You don't have to play a card. You can just pass and pass and pass, because you maybe want to have some cards closer to the end of the game, because having played the last action card is often a, a tiebreaker in this, which can win you the game. Uh, and so it's something to pay attention to, which is significant. But how and when you play your cards is very cagey. If you're getting into almost like bidding wars with people, a third player is going to fill that power vacuum and have a stack of cards that they can do a lot with towards the end of the game. So have to be very canny about how and when you do things. But uh, you, you then kind of go again. I might pass. You might play a card. You might pass. I, I can jump back in. I could play a card. You might pass, 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 and then we're going to resolve the next one. Oh, Strathclyde. Great. Here we do have a majority, so blue's going to win. All of these, whenever these are resolved, all these go back into the supply. And blue takes control of this. That takes us no closer to invasion, but now blue is winning. Uh, and once, once you've gone through all of these, all of these will get resolved. And what can happen is, if you were to blow all of your cards in these first four, all of these are just going to resolve as they are, right after each other, if no one has any cards left. So you really don't necessarily want to do that because you're going to lose control of a lot of things very quickly because this and the order in which they happen will trigger the end game so northumbria if no one had any cards and everyone had to pass for the game northumbria resolves boom invasion lancaster involves boom invasion because both of those had an even number and they were both unstable so if you thought there was going to be some kind of coronation because oh essex is going to go england devon's going to go england the timing of these is extremely important so once all of that's kind of happened, you're then looking at, uh, so we had an invasion, so who's got the most sets? Well, let's say I had one set and no one else had any, that's not very likely, I would win the game. But if these were resolved with control, let's say we had Scotland, Scotland, England, whoever has the most English cubes, let's say this person's got one, no one else has any, the English player simply wins, uh, because they their court is most aligned with the faction that did the best. So they're going to be coronated king. It's just a really neat neat game. Uh, I like having these different ways that the game can end and their different triggering... Um, uh, their different victory conditions. I, it reminds me a lot... Now we're going to say this probably a few times. A lot of, uh, of a PAX game. PAX Premier specifically is the one that we've played that has a similar concept to this, where there's evolving victory conditions and your allegiances can flip-flop and how the game ends can change and you can be working towards one and then change tech and flip your court. It's really, really neat. Uh, and it's 40 minutes long. It's very tight. It's very, you know, it's fairly abstract, but it's an extremely tight action economy game and it was really cool. So that's how it works. Let's uh, take, take a look at some final thoughts. So that's how the game works. Uh, again, tiny little board, eight spaces. Mm -hmm. You have a head of eight cards that you may or may yeah. not play all of them in the game, depending on how things go. It was a very tense game. And again, for a game to be 40 minutes long and to be tense and, and decisions to be agonizing, yeah. both one way or the other, was so great. Mm -hmm. That was so refreshing. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, we'll, we'll play very long games that have a lot of tension because mm -hmm. it builds over that course or you play a lot of short games that like 
the Japanese just don't quite hit the, the Japanese mark. not really there. Yeah, this this man just to do it really well. Yeah. while still being forty minutes long. It's great. And, and I think you you hit on a good point. We've played a lot of big, deep two and a half to three hour games where you're. It is back and forth in in people's faces. Man, those are exhausting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This game, forty minutes. You're going to play this at the end of the night after you've already played that big game. And in fact, that's what we did that night. It that was is? me, you, and our brother-in-law, Brum. We played like a three-hour pirate 4X game. Enjoyed it. We were wasted. We threw this thing down, played it in 40 minutes, and I felt like we were re-energized. We got a second wind. Then we ended up playing a, a third game that night. But what a great experience. So quick, so interesting. And really unique. I, I don't know that I've played a lot of games like this. And so, three players, that's how you're going to play this. There is a yeah. fourth player option where it's a 2v2 kind of team style mm-hmm. game. Which which I'd like to play just to see what it's like, but I want the tension. The, yeah, the, the three, three player, player is where it's really great. Yeah. At times you're, oh, we're working to screw that person over. And then the next turn, you're working to screw that person over immediately. Well, w- once you can see that someone has a lead in one of... Of, or other of the victory conditions, the other two are going to start ganging up on that person. Yeah, or so, if you've got two people going for the same victory conditions, the yeah. third person's now starting to try to trigger the other yeah, ones, and, and they can really hose both of them. So you really are never secure in what you're doing. No. You've just got to play your cards well, have reserve. You know, I felt like I, when we, I didn't play any more than one card per round, and ultimately I was the victor at the end because I had all the options. You guys had played your cards, you had got your lead, but then I was able to undo yeah. everything you had done, and then I was able to do what I needed to get. And victory. there's a lot of power in that, and so I very much learned, you're like, oh, you can't you can't blast through all your cards. No. You can't do that in this. You might be able to do it you have to, you once. You have to be able to... But you got to be able to be in the game Execute the, the game and win it, though, yeah. We, yeah. which we weren't able to kill it off. And yeah. so... Yeah, I think I'd be more measured in how I played yeah. this time. But it was great to see fun. that strategy not work, because I and, learned something. Yeah, and, and this is a game you got, I think, in a second-hand trade or a... Yeah, I, I, I either bought it second-hand for like 25 bucks or I got it in a trade. Yeah. It was, it was just... And I bought it because it looked cool. Genuinely, yeah. that's the only reason. Well, and it's historically themed, so that that's kind of the games that we typically are drawn to. Yeah, Although this theme is literally tacked on, it, it could be any number of yeah, things. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It looks yep. great. That carries the theme. It's like medieval, but it's kind of generic medieval. It's yeah. not like a time frame in it. But like, you you could just put a different side, a different map, Germany a different shape or color France, with yeah. eight areas and change the names of the cards. It's yes. the same game, but yeah, yeah. with a different theme. But more than any other game like that, the mechanics... And what they provide are so strong that it mm. carries the fact that the theme is fairly Paste thin on, on yeah. this one. Whereas I agree. that's normally something I kind of hate. Mm-hmm. I, I like a game to have like really, really good theme, theme integration. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if it doesn't, it has to have stellar mechanics. This one does. Yeah, this one has really so I'm amazing. Like, I'm, I'm happy. And, yeah. and you know, the forty minutes doesn't hurt, man. Yep. Because because you're not in a two hour game. It's four, yes. thirty to forty minutes. I really think it's thirty to forty minutes. Once you, I think that's what the, the box says. Once you get minutes. down, it's going to be thirty minutes. So, but yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed this. Had a good time. Would love to play it. I'd love to take it maybe to some, some conventions. But but once again, I want to play three player. I, I think so. That yeah. that's going to be the hard thing. But you'd like to. I'd, I'd like to see like a tournament of this almost. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be really interesting. But yes, The King is Dead, second edition from Osprey Games. Long live the king, can I say that? Absolutely. Yeah. The King is Dead. Long live the king. The King is Dead. All right, it was too much. <laughs> so The King is Dead from Osprey Games. Check it out if there's something you'd be interested in. Definitely check it out. Very tight 40 minute little abstract yeah. area control game. Excellent. Appreciate you tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.